All aboard. Greetings, my good and wonderful people. Welcome to Volunteer Channel TV. Today is the 25th of December 2021, Christmas Day. I told you guys I was going to be here today being Christmas Day. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas, whatever you are doing today. Be safe and thank God that you made it here today to see another Christmas. And I'm wishing you well and every one of you will see New Year 2022. I want to thank those who subscribe to my channel. I want to say thank you and may God continue to bless you in anything that you do. And if this is your first time coming across my channel, please hit that red subscribe button so that anytime I drop a video, it will come to you. Yes, please, my prayer warriors, keep praying for Mazim Namdekano. Keep praying for him and the lawyers. The lawyers have added another powerful, powerful lawyer to the defense team. So it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting case because I know uh, the Fulani Janjawi they they can not match the team the defense team IPOB has got now they cannot match them in any way. So it will be an interesting uh, court case to watch on the twentieth, I believe nineteenth or twentieth of uh, January. 2022. So we are eager and we are waiting to hear that case because I know Mazin Nandekano is going to come out f flying like an eagle, you know, because uh, he has not committed any crime. He has not committed any crime. He's a political prisoner. He is a political prisoner. So we are wishing him well. We hope that all these things will come to an end. Uh, hopefully, and uh, hopefully he will come out and take care of his health first. Uh, see his doctors and and uh, you know take care of his health. That's the most important thing because we need him. We need him alive. We need him to continue. Uh, with what he's doing and we know if he come out from that DSS dungeon he's bringing Biafra with him he's, we're going to raise that flag Biafra but then again we thank God for his mercy because they, they could have killed him they could have killed him but you know uh, he's God sent so uh, that didn't happen Anyways, uh, there is a picture. If you look at this picture here, went viral a couple of days ago by the first week. By Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, was going viral about Aisha Buhari being pregnant. This here, do not buy into it. This is a major, major, major distraction. This is a major distraction. They, they, they're doing that. This is fake. They're doing that so that all Nigerians will focus on that and forget what, they, what they're what they doing. Uh, uh, the people that are agitating, they will focus on that. This is a major, majorly distraction. Because if she is pregnant, if she is pregnant, she have the right to be pregnant. She's a married woman. So what? She's pregnant. So what? Ignore this, this, this distraction. Ignore it and focus on what you are doing. 
I know a lot of people didn't carry it. I, I shouldn't have carried it, but, you know, I, I just want to point out that this is a distraction. If she is pregnant, she is supposed to be pregnant if she's, if she's married, which she is. So, you know, uh, she's a good woman. Don't get me wrong. She's a good woman. Uh, we wish her, uh, you know, uh, a safe delivery. We wish her a bouncing baby boy, a bouncing baby girl, a bouncing twins, a bouncing triplets, a bouncing quadruple if she's pregnant. And some news outlet is carrying that she's sick. She's sick from cancer or something. Well, we wish her well. We wish her a quick recovery. But her husband, he said, no, no, uh-uh, 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 don't go there. Her husband, he said, no, no. He's a devil incarnate. That man, I mean, he has put us through hell. He has put Nigerians through hell. And what kind of legacy is this man going to leave behind? Because he is the worst president ever produced in Nigeria, as far as Nigeria is concerned. And the kind of legacy he's going to leave behind, I'm going to mention a few things here. And if it doesn't align with what you have in mind, just add to the list. And his legacy is going to be terrorism. It's going to be about corruption. It's going to be nepotism. It's going to be poverty. It's going to be penury. It's going to be inflation. It's going to be hunger in the land. It's going to be unemployment. It's going to be genocide. It's going to be uh, uh, pain and suffering. It's going to be anger. It's going to be ethnic cleansing. And etc. etc. If I didn't mention what's in your list, add one on. Because, you know, this man has dealt with Nigerians. He has dealt with Nigerians. Nobody in his right mind is wishing him well. Nobody. So, this is a major distraction from the wife or the presidency or the Nigerian government. Ignore that. And focus, if you are an agitator, Focus on what you're doing. Now, um, there's a lot that's going on. People are being killed, murdered. I mean, uh, just two days ago on Wednesday, I believe, a lot of people were killed, kidnapped in the north. And all these major atrocities are happening in, in, in the north. And, and, you know, they have all their soldiers in the south, especially the southeast, where they're killing and, and naming people. And, I mean, uh, we call them terrorists in the, in the uniform. You know, they are killing our youths. They are killing our youths in numbers. And we want this to stop. If you are in the military, if you are in the military and you're from the north, the same thing Mazim Namdekano said, prophesied, not too long ago. And he knew exactly what your game plan is. That they were going to bring all of you down south, especially southeast, south-south, to kill our people. But while you are doing that, the Mietialas, the Boko Harams, the Ice Wabs, the uh, uh, bandits, they are in the north killing your people. Just like he prophesied. By the time they are done with your people, you wouldn't have anywhere to go back to. You wouldn't have a home to go back to. Of course, you're, you're a terrorist, so when you go back, you're going to join them. But, you know, that is what is happening. That is what is happening. By the time they're done with the Nord, so I, I, I just want to assure 
I just want to assure the southerners. We need to agitate, yes. But we need to disintegrate Nigeria, yes. But the north, the terrorists in the north, they are going to do the job faster than we can. Because they are going to kill those people in the north and they're going to extricate themselves from Nigeria and answer Nigeria. So I'm, I'm, I'm just warning you guys, I'm just warning you guys in the south, like uh, Dr. Malafia Obadiah said, may his soul rest in peace, that this jihad war is going to start in 2022 is going to start in 2022. So if you are not well prepared by now, you better start doing something. I see the uh, the Southeast, uh, the, that is uh, Southeast Devil Mahi, have inaugurated a bubago on Wednesday, this last Wednesday. He inaugurated a Bubago. Good job. But I hope they do not go looking for ESN. ESN is our security people. We support them. We back them. Please stay out of their way because they cannot work with you guys. They cannot work with you guys. I don't know if you guys are setting up this bag to go after ESN, then it's going to be, I mean, you're going to set the eastern region or, or southeast on fire. That's what you're going to do. But if they stay in their lane and do what they need to do for them, because this war is coming. This war is coming. Benue State already doing the same thing. They're going to inaugurate their own security on the 23rd of January. So that, that's telling you what the, 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 the West, I mean the Yorubas, have already done theirs last year or a year and a half ago at Monteku. So the South should be prepared they should be prepared along the line between the north and the south. They should be prepared to defend the south. Because if you don't, by the time they conquer the north, then guess what? They're going to start coming down south. So their primary uh, objective right now is to take over north, which they are working tirelessly and hard to do. So I'm just I'm just advising you guys if you're in the south, this is the time, this is the time to prepare yourself because this war, this jihad war is coming in 2022. It's coming in 2022. They have already started, you know, you know what these terrorists did? The, the Mietialas and the rest of them, they use their cattle to destroy the food. And you know, Benue and some part of Plateau State and the rest of them, they got the farm to produce. But these terrorists have used their cattle to destroy all the farms. So it's going to be a farming. It's going to be a famine in, in, in Nigeria, especially in the north, especially in the north. They are using the same system they used when Biafra war was on. Because we had that economic blockade, starvation. I mean, we did not have any food. That's why that war did not last longer. Because people were dying of starvation. Now they're trying to use the same thing, the whole for the whole Nigeria. But it's not going to work. 
It's not going to work because people have learned. We have learned from history. This is what you are going to do, and people are well prepared. Though there is starvation right now, there's poverty, which you guys have have entrenched in Nigeria to suffer people. And that's how wicked this government is. This is how wicked it, it is. But mind you, while you're doing this, you are not you are not safe. You are not you are not safe because these terrorists, the Mietialas, the bandits, the Boko Harams, they don't know who is who. All they do is kill. Kill, kill, kill. So, this Nigeria system is not going to work. We are working hard to disintegrate Nigeria. But I know it's going to come from the north. Because you guys are trying to take over north. And when you do, the south is going to be prepared to wage the war, to wage you from coming coming down south. So but if South don't 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 watch it, this is what is gonna happen. This is what is gonna happen. I always take my quotation from Mazin Namdekano because he's a prophet. And everything Mazin Namdekano has said has happened. Everything that man prophesied has happened. Every one of them. I remember he said anybody that had hands in what happened in Biafra war, they will suffer the consequences. What is going on now in the north? What is going on now in in the north. See, that's a great prophecy. That man is God sent. That's why we are praying, we are praying, and, you know, we are praying for him, we're praying for the lawyers. Uh, I hope the people that are that are, uh, are, are working this thing bring up a new strategy or strategies how to release Mazim Namdekano. I myself, there's nothing I can do but preach the gospel. You know, preach the gospel. That's that's all I can do, and contribute to make for sure that ESN is alive. Because now he's being held. It looks like every everything is being scattered by those people that are in DOS because you know exposition has shown a lot of them has been compromised a lot of them has been compromised some of them are sold out and that's the worst thing you can be you know a sell out what are you going to gain from selling your brother what are you going to gain from doing all of this to kill your own brother? You are evil. And a lot of you guys, you know, a lot of you guys, when Biafra gets here, you better find somewhere where to be because you are going to face the wrath of the, of the law. So you better start repenting now. You better start repenting now. Because it's going to be hard. It is going to be hard when Biafra gets here. Because people are taking notes. You are being exposed. People are taking notes. And those notes they are taking, people that are being exposed, they are going to fit the rock of the law when Biafra gets here. Unless, unless you decide you know, to stay in Nigeria or stay elsewhere in the world, but not in Biafra land, because we are sure we, Biafra is going to come. 
is going to emerge because people are putting in everything they have. Now, there's an, another thing that we need to know. We need to know. When I was growing up, we've always been told about this story about uh, Idu and Oba war. War of Idu and Oba. We thought it was a fairy tale, just like the tortoise. You know, we thought it was a fairy tale. People are beginning to find out that actually, actually, we all are one blood. Both people in South South, Ikoda, Benia, Calabar, Ijo, uh, Irobo, Isoko, all the way to uh, Ikodomi Godo, uh, which is Benin. You know, we're all one people. We're all one blood. Why can't we come together? And, and, and the Igbos, the men land Igbo are extending their hands to Yoruba friendship and they're not extending their hand to South South. You know, they, they see, people are rejecting this Biafra. There's something got to do with this name. I, I was listening to uh, Dr. Nelly the other day. It seems like this 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 Biafra name is cursed. We've been killed. I mean, millions of people were killed during Biafra war, and we're still dying. And she was suggesting since we found out from her research, and a lot of people are researching. And Mazin Namikanu said the research about this Igodomi Godo and he do he do Igodomi Godo. What do you call key? What do you call key in Igbo land? Is it not Igodo anywhere from where I came from? Igodo is key. So now the Idu people are, are from Igodomi Godo and. We are all one, scattered from there to south-south and everywhere in the east, southeast. That's why you see the Ijaws, they are rejecting that, that name, Biafra. And we, the Igbos in the mainland, are still hampering on Biafra, Biafra, Biafra. We need to go back and research about Idu because we are the people of Idu from so many people that has researched and the story being told you know I'm working on that too you know we need to <clears throat> we need to find a common ground to apologize like Dr. Uh, uh, Nelly said to apologize to River Ryan area, our people in River Ryan area, because we are the cause why they're there. They were sold. They were sold. People were sold. People moved from different places. So if we can, if we can make an atonement, if we can apologize and come together as brothers and sisters, we can handle this thing. Maybe we can continue using Biafra until Biafra is uh, actualized. Then we can focus on changing that name. Because it, it looks like or feels like that name is caused. So let's think about it. Uh, I just want to make awareness or uh, you know on this so that people will start digging in. It's not like Mazin Nandikana has asked people to research about Igodomigodo, Idu, and Igodomigodo. Research about that and see what happened during that war of Idu and Oba. Because we heard that story when we were little. And we, you know, the, the way they explain it, they explain it as if it was a fairy tale. But it's not. So I would like for people to research. Let's get engaged in this topic. Let's get engaged in it um, and start talking about it.
create awareness about it, let people start talking and start digging deep. Maybe we can find somebody that will, uh, something that will unite everybody, both from the South South uh, Riverine area and and Ebos in the mainland. Everybody goes all the way from Igodomi go to Bini, all the way down to Riverine areas and the mainland Ebo. We need to research this and we need to come together. That's my take on that. But anyways, this is where I'm going to leave it. I'm going to go to my next topic, which I do every week. I'm still wishing you a Merry Christmas. And it's COVID. COVID, Omicron, is in town. It's ravaging. It's doing its thing. So you need to wear your mask. Continue to wear your mask and wash your hands regularly. And you in Nigeria don't think that Omicron is not there. It is there. It is breathing. It is there. Don't fool yourself. Always wear your mask. Wear your mask. Let people laugh at you. Let them call you whatever name. Yes. But you are protecting yourself. You are protecting yourself. Because it, it's not easy. When you get sick with this thing, oh my God. You will wish that you wear your mask. You will wish that you wear your mask. And if you're opportune to take that that uh, uh, vaccine, do so. You do that. Don't worry about what people say. I know a lot of people don't want to take the vaccine. They say they call it evil. Ah, you better you best take your vaccine <clears throat> if you're opportune because it's going to help you. We are in this world where a lot of things is before us. And we get, we, when we have the knowledge, we have to take care of ourselves. You can't wait for somebody to come, you know, make you wear your mask and all of this and all of that. But like I said last week, you already know some places now they will not let you in if you don't have your mask on. You can travel in public uh, transportation, transportation like flying without your mask. You have to have your vaccine. And some places they enforce it. You got to show your vaccination card. So it depends on where you are and what is going on. And please, I'm going to say this. If you're home for Christmas, if you're in Nigeria for Christmas, Take extra precaution. Take care of yourself. Be security conscious. Be aware of what is going on around you. A lot of things are happening in Nigeria. People are being killed, especially, especially if you travel from abroad, if you travel from Asia, America, uh, United Kingdom, uh, Italy, all these places back to Nigeria, be very careful because they know. People in Nigeria know when you come in. Don't ask me how they know because they can tell. Once they look at you, they can tell that you're, you're not in Nigeria. You don't live here. Your hair, your clothes, your skin, they can tell that you don't live amongst them. So be very careful because, you know, you could get robbed, take everything taken away from you. You could get killed easily. So be careful and watch about this, wear your mask too when you're in Nigeria because there's, there's uh, COVID-19, Omicron is there. It is there. And most people don't wear their mask in Nigeria. They don't. So take care of yourself. And I'm going to go to my next topic, which is men. I keep repeating this. I'm going to preach it every week. If you're male, you have one on you that's going to come after you. When you're 50, 
your body will start changing. You're going to start noticing something, which is called prostate. The way you use the bathroom is going to change, especially men. Women don't have prostate. Men does. They do have prostate. And this is something that you got to wor be worried about. Because it's going to come. Where you use the bathroom frequently. And the reason why you're using the bathroom frequently is because you are not emptying your bladder. You want to go use the bathroom. You stand up there. It takes you a longer time for you to start urinating and, and you come on and cut off, come on and cut off and in a little bit you think you're through. You go on by your business. 10, 15 minutes later, you here you go, running back to the bathroom. Especially at night when you lay down to go to bed. You wake up about five, six, seven times during the night to use the bathroom. See, why I'm saying this is that people always tell you what they know. I've experienced it. I have experienced it. I'm in my late 60s. Yes, I've experienced it. And I took care of it by surgery. When it first happened, I started taking medication that helped me use the bathroom. Then after a while... You know, I said, no, I cannot continue taking this medication. I have to do something about it. I went and did the surgery. And the surgery is about five minutes long, and you're out of there. Only, the only thing there is that you got to wear a catheter for about a week. But after that, you're okay. They, they will take you off the medication. I'm telling you from experience. Now I don't have that problem. I can go use the bathroom, and I stand there, and I pee like I'm 15 years old. I'm telling you from experience. This is what you got to watch for. And, and when you do the medication, they, they will give you, some of the medications will give you an ED. That is erectile dysfunction. From having prostate, you are not hard enough because it weakens you then you start taking the medication you are plumb out you don't have no erection but the doctors will know what medication is right for you for your body so when these things start happening from 50 years old go see your doctor he will tell you everything that you need to know if you are the type that don't like going seeing a doctor, read it up. Google it. Prostate. It could be benign. It could be cancerous. When it's, your prayers will be, let it be benign. That is not cancerous. Then you can do these things. But if it, if it is cancerous, you can still go in, let them take everything out, you'll still be alive. But if you don't do these things, it's going to kill you. It's going to kill you. That prostate kills men. It does. It kills men. And it, it sounds like when you are in your 60s, oh man, it, it, it looks like it, it intensifies. If you don't have a treatment till you're in your 60s, maybe between 60 and 65, you're going to have a majorly, majorly problem in your hands. So I'm just warning you, I'm preaching this because I've been through it. I'm preaching this to you so that you know. You say things that you have experienced so other people will know, will learn from you. Now I'm not taking any medication. I can use the bathroom uh, uh, like I'm 15 years old. I still have erection, you know, so I'm good. At least, you know, guaranteed for another 20 years. Hopefully I'll be in my mid-80s, you know. If you come back then, I don't care. If I'm in my mid-80s, you know, it can go ahead and take me out. So I'm just telling you so you know. Have a Merry Christmas. I'm wishing you the best. And if you're out there, be careful. People are driving crazy. People are rushing. This is Christmas Day. 
Be careful you should be home enjoying your dinner or whatever. Today is Christmas Day. Uh, you know, you should be home enjoying your dinner and uh, having your merry men, people that's drinking will drink and, you know, have a good time and all that. I know today is Christmas Day. Take care of yourself till I come to you on New Year's Day. I'll be here on New Year's Day. New Year's Day. Yes. I want to see you on New Year's Day. I want to see you on my program in New Year's Day to make for sure that you made it through. Of course, I'm praying for you that you make it to see 2022. Yes, we will all see 2022, especially if you're watching my program. If you hear my voice, yeah, for sure, you're going to make it 2022. So I'm going to leave it here till January 1st, 2022, and that will be my anniversary, one year anniversary on YouTube. One year anniversary on YouTube. Man, time flies. Time flies. Uh, it, it, next January will make it 52, 52 videos I've made because I come every every weekend, every weekend. So I, I'm not one of those that do two, three, four videos a day. No, I'm not in this for money. I, I just come here to speak my mind, you know, to tell people what I feel. If you see, I don't have that much followers, which is good for me, because I don't have people backbiting me, you know. So I'm not here for money, but I'm here to speak my mind. So until next week, take care of yourself, and God bless you. Goodbye. <laughs>